a Castle V6 boiler gas firebox burner. The Castle Steam V6 boiler is an excellent piece of equipment. In this video I show something that makes it even better. Now I can conveniently gas fire the boiler in the workshop. And here it is, a complete ash pan assembly fitted with a gas burner. This is very well designed. When I turn it round you can see that it's fitted with a gas inlet venturi and also a piezoelectric igniter. The burner unit and the igniter fit into an existing ash pan. But I prefer to have two ash pans, one with a gas burner in it for gas firing and the other one with a grate in it for coal firing. In this clip you can see the spark from the igniter. Personally I do not like these kind of igniters, more about this later. The burner assembly is designed to be very quickly removable from the ash pan. But as I've just mentioned I won't need to do this because I'll just use a different ash pan for coal. Lurking in the corner of my workshop is a space heater with a propane tank. I don't use the space heater because it causes too much condensation in the workshop. This is the bit that I'm interested in, the propane tank. I've fitted the regulator and you will notice that this is a variable regulator. It's time to open the gas valve and test the burner on the bench. And as you can clearly see it works very well. The first thing I notice is that the amount of heat from the burner is substantial. Now I know that the burner works I'm going to try it with the boiler sat on top of it. Here's the current arrangement, the V6 boiler is sat on an ash pan and this one is used for coal firing the boiler. To lift the boiler off the ash pan all I have to do is remove four pipe connections. This is a steam inlet to the water pump and at the other side of the boiler is a water outlet to the check valve from the hand pump as well as the water outlet from the Southworth engine steam pump. I also removed the water gauge's blowdown valve but I'm going to shorten it so it won't need removing in future. The last time I used this boiler was outside obviously because I don't coal fire in the workshop and it started to rain so I let the fire go out fairly quickly and brought it into the workshop before I got too wet. The vacuum cleaner made short work of getting rid of the ashes but it couldn't get rid of these pieces which are known as clinker. The last time I used this boiler was to test my twin Stuart 5A steam engine. The Stuart 5A twin has two two and a quarter inch diameter cylinders and a boiler of only six inches in diameter is just not big enough for an engine this size. But by use of the steam blower and careful firing I managed to make this boiler provide enough steam to run the engine. The steam powered water pump was constantly in use to replenish the water being evaporated and the fire was so bright when I looked at it the fire was white hot. That's where the clinker came from and the grate's been slightly damaged by that. The cast iron grate was not far away from melting. With the help of my trusty Henry vacuum cleaner all of the residue was removed easily. Here's the boiler sat on the new ash pan. And before filling the boiler with water I just tried a quick test of the igniter. This test was done very quickly because there's not yet any water in this boiler and as you can see the fire is far too fierce because when I open the fire hole door the fire comes out of the fire hole door. Personally I do not like these push button igniters and here I'm using a battery powered igniter. It's the one that I normally use to light my blowtorch. Once again the test was very short. And in this test I turned down the regulator on the gas canister and I think the flame is about right. This is why I don't like the push button igniters. Every push does not always generate the spark to light the fire. I'm going to modify this burner assembly by removing the push button igniter. Then I will light the burner by using the open flame of a normal gas lighter introduced into the firebox before I open the gas valve. The gas is currently turned off and the boiler is completely cold and I need to make a modification to the height of the boiler because the other ash pan lifted the boiler into a higher position. You can see how the pipes don't align. If you look carefully at this clip you will see an allen key and I was going to use that to remove the ash pan from the base. But then I thought of a much simpler idea. I used three stainless bolts to elevate the position of the ash pan. This was a really easy job, all I did was put a nut on the bolt with a washer 
and then fit another washer and a nut on the top, and once everything was tightened up, the ash pan lifted the position of the boiler so I could put it all back together. I want the operation to be quick and simple, because even though I like the convenience of a gas-fired Castle V6 boiler, I still want to be able to run it using coal. And changing the ash pans is very simple. As I previously mentioned, all I have to do is remove four pipe unions to free off four pieces of pipe. Then I can lift the boiler off the coal-fired ash pan, and with the gas-fired ash pan in position, I simply put the boiler back on top of that. Here I'm tightening the union that holds the water gauge's blow-down pipe, but I won't have to do this because I'm going to shorten the pipe. As always, I'm using my trusty Barco spanner to tighten the unions, and you will notice that none of the union nuts have been damaged by this method. But in reply to all the comments that I get about using adjustable spanners, I have to say, don't forget, this is a Barco spanner, which is considerably better than quite a lot of other ones. In this clip, what I've done is connected some compressed air to the boiler, and I'm operating the steam pump, which as you can see, is rapidly filling the boiler. With sufficient water in the boiler, now I can light the burner and leave it running. The gas is lit. The flame is yellow because inside the boiler's firebox are lots of particles from it being coal-fired. This is not a problem at all. I just shut the firehole door and waited until steam was raised. And I was quite surprised how quickly the steam was raised. This is a great burner. And no, it's not a converted existing industrial burner. This is purpose designed for the job by Michael Whitehouse, the designer of the V6 boiler. This part of the video is in real time and you can see how quickly the needle is going up the gauge and in no time at all it hits 100 pounds per square inch and the safety valves blow. A quick blow on the whistle drops the pressure slightly but within seconds it's back up to full pressure. I opened a valve to the steam boiler feed pump to make it run quite fast and that started to flatten the pressure. This pump is designed to feed a much bigger boiler, and running at this speed, it's too much. It literally flattened the pressure completely. But as soon as I reduced the speed of the pump, the pressure went back up to full. I thought I would relight the boiler when it was hot. Here's the lighting sequence again in slow motion. It's bad enough lighting the boiler when it's cold, it's far worse lighting it when it's hot. And I was pressing the igniter before I opened the gas valve. This igniter has to go and I will use a naked flame to light the gas. In no time at all the pressure was back at 100 pounds per square inch and blowing off. I'd like to show you this. I'm pressing the test button on my carbon monoxide alarm which shows that it's working and it's very close to the boiler's chimney and proves that the gas burner is not giving off any carbon monoxide fumes. That's it for the test and the final part is to close the valve on the canister. After this I move the boiler and the canister into a position in the workshop where it can stay. And when I want to use it as a workshop test boiler all I have to do is connect a suitable water supply to it followed by lighting the gas using an open flame gas burner lighter. I can recommend having a Castle V6 boiler in your life, they really are very good. And that's it for this video, I'd just like to say stay healthy, do not set fire to yourself, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.